In this video, we'll take a look at solving polynomial equations and inequalities. We've been working on factoring and graphing, and the whole reason for doing those um, exercises is to be able to deal with something like solving an equation, like this one, for example, where we want to find the value of x that makes this true. So when we have something on this side that equals zero, a polynomial, we know that we can factor this. And if you remember, we're looking for two numbers here that are going to multiply to two and add to three. Well, two and one multiply to equal two. Two plus one equals three. So this is pretty easily factored as x plus two times x plus one equals zero. And now what we want to do is to recognize that in order for two things multiplied, this times this, to equal zero, then one of these, or possibly both of them, would have to be equal to zero. So we would say that x plus two could equal zero, and we would say that x plus one could equal zero. And if we solve this for x, we find that x equals negative two makes this true, x equals negative one makes this true. So let's just go back to our original equation up here and make sure that this works. If we plug in first x equals negative 2, we get negative 2 squared plus 3 times negative 2 plus 2. Negative 2 squared will be positive 4. 3 times negative 2 gives us negative 6, and then we have plus 2 here. And so we see that 4 minus 6 will give us negative 2 and then negative 2 plus 2 gives us 0. So that appears to work just fine. Let's check our other answer, which is x equals negative 1. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing, except now we'll plug in negative 1. And let's see what this equals. Negative 1 squared gives us 1. 3 times negative 1 gives us negative 3. And 2 is left over here. 1 minus 3 gives us negative 2. We add 2, and once again, we get 0. If we were to graph this polynomial, we would start off by building the leading term. So we would take x times x, and we get x squared. So we see that this is a degree of 2, which is uh, even. And the leading coefficient out here is 1. Leading coefficient is uh, positive. And so that's going to give us n's that do this. Now we can recognize this factored out, or expanded out, I should say, as a uh, parabola. Quadratic always gives us a parabola. So this shape makes sense. Now let's go ahead and graph this. We have zeros if you remember, at x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 1. Each one has a multiplicity of 1. Let's go ahead and plot these. We're going to put our n's at our first and last zeros, which happens to be the only zeros we have. And we see that since these both have multiplicities of 1, that the graph is going to pass through. And so we know that with an x squared, we're going to have a parabola. But the point is, that now we have a relationship between this graph and the function being equal to zero because the x-axis, the x-axis is the line y equals zero. And so any place that a function hits the x-axis, whether it crosses or just touches and bounces, is going to give us the place, the x value, where that function equals zero. So solving for a polynomial equal to zero is really just a matter of finding the zeros, finding the points where the x, or where the function crosses or touches the x-axis, such as these two points for this polynomial. But suppose instead of finding where we're equal to zero, we want to know where we're positive or negative. In other words, positive is where the graph is greater than zero and negative is where the graph is less than zero. Well, again, we'll go through the same process to find the zeros, which means we need a factored polynomial and probably a graph. 
But now what we're going to do is to find all the values of x that make this true, not equal to 0, but greater than 0. Well, where is greater than 0 on this graph? If this is y equals 0, the x-axis, then we know that y is greater than 0 for all values of y above, and y is less than 0 for all values of y below the x-axis. So this is positive, this is negative, 0 is right on this line. So we can look at this graph and say, well, this graph may do some stuff between these two points, but eventually it's going to wrap back around and cross going this way. And so what do we know for sure about this? We know that this graph is negative between the points negative 2 and negative 1, and positive for all other values. And so we can write our answer in a couple of different ways. We could say that for all values of x less than negative 2, and for all values of x greater than negative 1. In other words, all values of x to the left of negative 2, and not including negative 2. All values of x to the right of negative 1, but not including negative 1, makes the graph positive, makes the graph greater than 0. The graph is above the x-axis for those values. It's equal to 0 for x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 1. And we should be able to see then also that it's going to be negative. Okay, this is positive, 0, and negative for values of x between negative 2 and negative 1. In other words, all these values of x right here have a graph below the x-axis, and so we would say negative 2 is less than x is less than negative 1. All values of x between negative 2 and negative 1 make that polynomial less than 0. So we really don't have to do any additional work once we have the graph here. We just have to look to see what part of the graph is above the x-axis, what part is equal to the x-axis, okay, and what part is below the x-axis to get all three cases here. Now suppose that the right side of this equation is not equal to 0. What can we do? Well, again, this is why we find zeros of polynomials, because that's the easiest way to break down a polynomial and figure out what values of x work. By factoring and setting equal to 0, we're able to find those points pretty easily. In this case, we have the negative 2 on this side. And so whenever we solve polynomial equations or inequalities, what we want to do is to get one side equal to 0, which means if we have terms on this side, like the negative 2 in this case, and let me put negatives on these guys down here too, what we're going to have to do is first get both sides, I'm sorry, get one side equal to 0 by adding to both sides negative 2 in this case. So this gives us x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0, which is the same case that we had on uh, previously in the video. And so we know that x equals negative 2, x equals negative 1, because this becomes this when we factor. And so we'll do the same thing for the inequalities. We can add 2 to both sides change the inequality to look like this. And now we can graph to find where y is greater than 0. So rather than worrying about where this function is greater than negative 2, we're going to add 2 to both sides so that we're going to look at where this function is greater than 0, which is a lot easier to do on the graph because, again, we'll factor this and be able to graph it and tell what we're trying to get. Okay, And then here the same thing, except now we're looking for where the graph is less than 0. Process is the same. Solve one side for 0. and factor and graph. Let's look at something a fair amount more complicated and we'll see that actually 
something like this is really not much more difficult than what we were just looking at except for the fact that we have a little bit more setup work to do. Once again we want to make sure that we set one side equal to zero and in this case we could actually move this stuff to this side or we could move this stuff to this side and I would suggest it, when you do this to take a look at your leading terms and try to get the leading term to be positive on one side or the other. In other words, we have 2x squared over here, we have x squared over here, and so if we subtract x squared from both sides to begin with, this is going to be 2x squared minus x squared gives us 1x squared, which is positive. Okay, and then that also simplifies this side a bit. If we were to subtract 2x squared from both sides, I would cancel out my 2x squared here, but then this would be x squared minus 2x squared, which would be negative x squared, and that just adds one more level of complexity that we don't really need here. So we've added negative x squared to both sides and reduced the equation to this. Let's go ahead and now try to get rid of this negative x over here by adding positive x to both sides. and we're almost there. One more step. Let's get rid of the 12, the negative 12 rather. x squared plus 7x plus 12 is greater than or equal to 0. So now we have our function with 0 on one side. And the next thing we want to do is factor. Okay, this one it turns out to be x plus 3 times x plus 4. Work that one out if you want to convince yourself that that's the case. We know this is greater than or equal to zero. So let's make a graph. And we see that we have zeros at x equals negative three, x equals negative four. Once again, both multiplicities are one. This is a even degree with a positive leading coefficient. Our n behavior looks like this. We have zeros at negative 4 and negative 3. Our ends go this way. Multiplicity of 1 means we're going to cross through the x-axis. Everything in between these points will be negative. Everything outside those points will be positive. Everything equal to these points will be 0. So notice we have greater than or equal to 0 here. So we really want to solve for two cases. Where is this greater than zero, it's greater than zero for x less than negative four and x greater than negative three. Where is it equal to zero? Okay, remember that's what this means. Well, it's going to be equal to zero at our zeros. x equals negative four, x equals negative three, which means that it will be greater than or equal when x is less than or equal to negative 4, or x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So from this point onward to the left, from this point onward to the right, all my y values are either greater than 0 or equal to 0 as they are at this point right here. All right, here's another example, a um, little bit more difficult. So let's go ahead and uh, and work on this one. It's already factored on the left side here and it's already set to zero on the other side so we're ready to start working on this. Whenever we have inequalities there are some algebraic ways to do this but it's probably easier to do this graphically. And so what I'm going to do here is start working on getting the leading term. So we're going to take 7x. We have an x which is squared and we have a 2x over here. Okay, and if we multiply this together, we have negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. x times x squared times x gives us 14 times x to the fourth. This is a even degree and a negative leading coefficient, giving us an n behavior that looks like this. Okay, so the next thing we need to do then is to find the zeros and their multiplicity. Now remember that negative 7 
x is the same as negative 7x plus 0. So don't forget the 0 that we have there. I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit expanded out so that we emphasize the presence of this 0 here, which means we have a 0 at x equals 0. Its multiplicity is 1. We have a 0 at x equals negative 1 for this guy. Its multiplicity is 2. And then here we can take 2x minus 7 equals 0, uh, 2x equals 7, x equals 7 halves, which is 3.5. Um, multiplicity is 1 for that guy. Graph it, what do we get? We've got a 0 at 0, we have 1 at negative 1, we have 1 out here at 7 halves. So we know that the graph is going to touch the x-axis at those three points and now we want to see whether it crosses or bounces. Let's put our end behavior on our two endpoints and start working on this. At the far left here at negative 1 we have an even multiplicity which means that this graph is going to turn around bounce off the x-axis going to be equal to negative or equal to 0 at x equals negative 1. Next, we come across x equals 0. We have an odd multiplicity, which means that eventually this graph will turn back around, cross through this way, and at 7 halves, an odd multiplicity again. Graph will go up here and do something, come back, and cross through. Okay, so now we can say where is this function, this graph, less than 0? Well, less than 0 is below the x-axis. So to solve this, we want to be a little bit careful here because we can see where we're below the x-axis. And remember that this graph will do something along in here. It could wiggle around in here, it could go up and down, but eventually it's going to meet over here. And all values in here will be negative. So let's see. We've got values of x less than negative 1, which is from here on this way. We have values of x between negative 1 and 0, but not including negative 1 and 0. Why does it not include negative 1 and 0? Because x is equal to 0 at those two points. What we want is strictly less than. So you do have to be careful about watching that sign. If we want less than, it cannot include those individual points. Everything to the left and right, perhaps, but not that particular point. We see from this point on the graph becomes positive and stays positive until we get back over to x equals 7 halves where it's 0. So we still don't want that point because we want less than 0. Here the graph is negative and so for all x values going this way the y value will be less than 0. So x greater than 7 halves. So the solution set is really all of these values. So in other words, what we find is that the graph is negative for these values of x, negative for all these values of x, okay, and positive over here, and then negative again where this graph is below zero. So we want to have an open circle at these points because the graph is actually equal to zero at that point, which means it's neither positive nor negative. All right, so let's take a look at the flip side of this uh, as another example. Instead of less than or equal, let's go, or I'm sorry, instead of less than, let's go ahead and make this greater than or equal to and see how that changes our answer. So once again, we'll go through and collect up our leading term. negative 14x to the fourth. That hasn't changed. Graph looks like this on the ends. Our zeros are x equals 0, multiplicity of 1. x equals negative 1, multiplicity of 2. x equals 7 halves, multiplicity of 1. We'll make our sketch. Negative 1, 0, uh, 7 halves, not 3 halves, 7 halves, okay. Um, put our 
points right there. Add in our n behavior. Okay, at x equals negative 1, we're going to bounce off. At x equals 0, and at 7 halves, we pass through. So same graph we had before. But now we're looking for where is this graph greater than or equal to 0? So two places. It's equal to 0 on the x-axis, and it's greater than 0 above the x-axis. So let's go ahead again and see what that means. We know it's equal to 0 at these points because those are our zeros. So the graph is going to touch at this single point, cross at this single point, cross at this single point. These are the three values where the function is equal to 0. Where is it greater than 0? Well, once again, as this goes from negative to positive, it stays positive, whatever it's doing up here, until it comes back down to here. So this whole range of x values will give us a positive y value along with these three points. So how do we write that? We write that as x equals negative 1 or 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 7 halves. This is our solution set right here that represents that point x equals negative 1 and this range of values, this range of values right here is this. All of those places satisfies this. So I could pick any value of x, let's say a value of x equals positive 1, somewhere in here. And I should get a positive number if I do that. So I can continue on finding those values for any of these solutions. So a summary of the process. We want to be sure that we set one side of the equation or the inequality to zero. We're going to graph the factored polynomial. Okay, Make sure it's factored, otherwise it's really difficult to graph it. And then we're going to figure out which values of x or which range of values or intervals of x correspond to y values on the graph that are below the x-axis if we want uh, less than zero on the x-axis if we want greater than, uh, equal to zero rather, or above the x-axis if we want greater than zero. So if our polynomial is said to be less than zero, we want values only below the x-axis. If we want the polynomial less than or equal to zero, we want values of the graph that are below the x-axis or right on the x-axis. And same over here, if we want greater than zero only. We want places where the graph is only above the x-axis. And if we have greater than or equal to zero, places where the graph is above or right on the x-axis.